Hey, it's Jeremy. My kids like to call me Skinny Papa. Today, we're gonna to take a look at the new deck building game for two to four players called Fort. It's brand new from Leader Games right here in Minnesota. So let's crack open the box and take a look at what's inside. Now, once again, you can see that Leader Games has got the whimsical art stylings from Kyle Farron here pictured throughout the game. I'm a big fan of his whimsical style and I think it particularly fits super well with this game about kids building forts. Um, Kyle did the art for Root and Vast, so if you're familiar with the other games from Leader Games, you'll recognize his style. But let's, uh, let's dig open this box and see what's in here. Uh, it's, a, it's a much smaller box than other Leader Games, by the way. It's a very compact size. Well, that's a nice touch. There's even a little tiny illustration iconography uh, inside the box instead of just raw cardboard. That's nice. So we'll just pop that over there. Uh, we've got a little rule book. And we'll look at that in a minute in more detail, but uh, it seems pretty compact, pretty simple. Uh, lots of illustrations and actions and references and glossary to look at. Uh, so a little compact 16 page booklet. So it's a 20 to 40 minute game for ages eight up. So I can't imagine that the rules are too complex, but I would imagine from leader games, you have a lot of um, strategy and variability in here. So, oh, these are nice. Look at this. So here the are uh, player boards, these are very thick, very hefty double layer player boards so that you put in your uh, tokens or whatever into the slots I imagine and those look like they're gonna stay in place uh, even if you bump them. So um, you've got one, two, three, four player boards. Very nice quality, very thick. Um, each one on the back describes uh, who your best friends are. So on this yellow card, Bud and Rusty would be your best friends. Uh, Ace and Sparky on the green card. The orange card, you're friends with Flipper and Bitsy. And on the red card, you are best friends with Blades and Zip. Let's take a look at that artwork there. So Blades obviously has got some roller blades and Zip has a skateboard, hoverboard. Yeah, it's just a skateboard. Uh, it'd be cool if it was a hoverboard, but yeah. This isn't uh, Back to the Future here. So we've got the player boards. We've got a very nice victory uh, tracker here so we can track the progress through the game. And there's a park section here where you must uh, put other cards. Then it looks like we've got some jumbo cards, uh, reference cards for each player. I, I, I like these kind of jumbo playing card feel. That's that's fun. Nice, nice artwork. I love the artwork. Um, but these seem very clear. So we've got the suits of the cards, squirt gun, skateboard, shovel, glue, crown, book, coin, which is uh, wild, can be treated as any. We've got things. So any one suit, fort level, cards and lookout, resources and pack. Uh, per modifiers, then modifiers, pay one less, pay one more. And then the actions, which I think are kind of the meat of the game here is add a blue token toy to your stuff, add a pizza to your stuff, add a pizza or toy, add a copy of your pack to your stuff, add a copy of a rival's pack to your stuff, pay resources, move a resource from stuff to pack, Add a card from hand to look out, trash a card in your hand or discard, trash this card, trash a card in your rival's yard, score victory points, pay a toy, pay a pizza, convert toy to pizza or pizza to toy, and recruit a card. So these are the different uh, actions in the game, reference cards for each player. Um, these feel really big. I wonder if two smaller ones would feel better just because um, sitting next to these boards, like having two of them somewhere rather than one big one. I don't know. I mean, maybe after some point 
you're not even gonna need these uh, anymore. These are nice, very readable, uh, even for people like me who have glasses, so <laughs> no worries there. And then, okay, we've got the pizzas and the toy tokens, and then uh, are these the score tracker? No, these are the, the round are the fort level trackers. So you can track um, what level your fort is built up to. So there's pizzas and toys. We have the deck of cards. We'll open that in a second. And then we've got a smaller deck of cards. Uh, I don't know what these are. Let's open these up. Okay, we've got perk cards, first player card, the lucky rock on it. Uh, some made up rules. Of course, you got kids, you gotta just make up rules. And then the macaroni sculpture card. Uh, this is the end game bonus card. If you if you can build or win the macaroni sculpture, uh, this is gonna give you some extra victory points. So that's kind of cool. But yeah, so these are little um, perks and rule cards here. First player card, cute. Okay, we'll look through those more. Uh, but here's here's the deck building deck that you're gonna use and uh, Let's open this up and take a peek at what we got Now I like I like a good deck builder. I love deck builders in fact, you know, I mean from the old granddaddy Dominion to um, Star Realms Hero Realms uh, Clank is a great one. Uh, I find Clank is playable by all players any ages and it's fun. Um, Tyrants of the Underdark, um, even to some extent uh, games like Aristea, very slight deck building in that one. But uh, Netrunner of course you're you're building decks uh, literally. Um, but I don't know, would you call that actually a deck builder? Mm, maybe not. Anyway, the Okay, there's lots of iconography on these cards. So uh, we'll have to look at the rule book and figure out what all this means, but. Dude, okay. So the suits, okay, yeah. So they're different suits. The coin's a wild card. And these are the character cards, the friends. Okay, so these these are the character cards apparently here, and so each one has maybe a suit on it or uh, some affinity with a suit. I don't know. All right, so we got the character cards, and then we've got the suit. So we got the squirt gun suit. Some have singles, and it looks like one at least has a double suit. We got the glue suit. We got wild and crown, and then crown. Book, double. there's a double in there, and then singles, we got another wild. We got the uh, skateboard suit, a double. Shovel suit, we got a double. Okay, so mostly singles and maybe one double in every suit. So, yeah, okay, cool. The cards feel good, they're, um, they're not too thick and not too thin. They're probably just about right, I would say. Um, yeah, these feel feel good. They're well cut, smooth. They don't have any jagged edges on them, so that's nice. Um, yeah, it seems like the pizza and toy tokens, there's a little graphic on uh, one side of them at least. The blue ones mark toys and the yellow ones with a little bit of pizza art on them. You can see that. So there's a little pizza art on there, and on the toys, there's a little toy box art on there. So yeah, nice. I like I like the wood tokens. Those feel good. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna take a break and I'm gonna read through this um, setup and rule book and figure out what the rules are, and then I'll come back here and give you a quick rundown of how to play the game. 
All right, and here we are set up for a two-player game of Fort. So you take your player cards or boards and you put your uh, Fort level token on zero and zero. Place your score other marker on the score tracker, victory track, to zero. And then you're gonna add in uh, made up rules and perk cards. And you do it uh, one plus the number of players. So three perk cards, they get chosen or dealt, sorry, randomly and placed face up and the rest are returned to the deck. And then you choose plus one over the number of players. So in this case, three, uh, th these are the made up rules and they go face down next to the victory track. The macaroni sculpture victory card goes next to the victory track as well, as well as the deck of park cards. And from the deck of park cards, you pull out three kids that you are eligible to recruit to your uh, group of players. And then each player takes their two best friend cards. And remember those are printed on the back of the player board. So mine are Ace and Sparky. And you take those two cards plus eight drawn from the park deck and you shuffle them together to create your starting 10 card deck and mix those up well. Um, you keep the toys and the pizza nearby. Um, by the way, these are just simply I cork Ikea uh, little what cup, cup holders, not cup holders. Uh, I don't know, what are the words? <laughs> My brain is not working. Uh, <laughs> you put your cup on these, right? Whatever these are called. I don't know, they're cork. They work good for bit bulls, they're super cheap. Uh, so I always have a bunch of those laying around near my table anyway. I do have cup holders for my table, but uh, these are handy to have. They work great for bit bulls and they're very inexpensive. So you shuffle up your starting deck and you draw five to start playing, just like most deck builders that you may have played in the past. And so that's the setup of the game. Pretty simple. Um, let's look at each card and what it entails. So the upper left is the suit of the card, right? So we have the uh, six plus one wild. So we have seven suits possible. And the anatomy of the card is this top action is a public action. So when you play this, the other players of the game may also choose to play this action. They can follow along. This secondary box is a private action. And during the game, you can play one or both of these. You have to fully complete one of them to play the other one. So whichever one you choose first, you have to fully complete it to be able to play the second one. The second one can be a partial play, but you have to be able to do a full play. So if, for example, uh, you were getting pizzas per the number of books you had, and you had in your hand the cards you were playing, you had multiple pizzas already in your stuff, and you played two, uh, you, you only have one spot open here, so you can't fully play this one, right? You have to be able to play it in full. So if you played this two books, one slot open, you can't fully play this one. You might have to choose this secondary one here, uh, pizzas per skateboard suit, to uh, fully play that one to then choose to play that second one partially, okay? So whenever you play the first one, you have to play it fully to play the second one. So if you're unable to place a resource, you can't play it fully, okay? So just keep that in mind as you're playing. When you have cards that have a parentheses times a suit, you do this action. So recruit a card, then get a pizza resource for every squirt gun. So if you had two squirt guns, you have to recruit and be able to get a pizza uh, per squirt gun. Again, you have to fully be able to do these actions, okay? So um, keep that in mind, okay? Uh, and then the game proceeds from there. So you choose one card to play. So if I chose, uh, whoops, I grabbed one of these cards and I don't remember which one it was. I'll just put 
the no it was a blue card anyway i'll put that one back uh, so these are my five starting cards in my hand here and i choose one of them to play and maybe i want to choose ace here ace is my best friend and if i choose him i can trash a card or I can get any two resources. Remember if they're blank, you can choose which ones they are. So I'll put all these back off of my board and I choose to play ace and I can uh, get any two resources. So the first action is to play a card and play it from your hand and you use one or both of the actions, okay? Now when you play a card, you can add suits to it to increase its power. So here I could call a suit of some other thing. Um, I don't really see that there's a multiplier here that is useful for adding suits to this particular card. It'd be great to get resources, but I can't increase the number of resources I'm getting in this case. So if, for example, I wanted to play Babyface and I get uh, to recruit per pizza per or recruit and get a pizza per squirt gun, I could add a resource to that to get more. I don't have any currently in play. You can put cards in your lookout to be suits available for multipliers, but I don't have any right now, but I could add a suit so I can add another one here, like so, from my hand. And so now I have two, so I could recruit from the park or from the yard, which is up here, so those are unused cards during your turn, get placed faced up in the yard. Not your best friends, but any other cards that you have from the park deck or from the park, okay? So I could recruit from here and get pizza per squirt gun and I have two now. So that sounds pretty good. So maybe I want to get more pizzas per books. Maybe I have books in my hand, so I'll recruit and get a pizza and I'll I don't know, maybe I'll take worm. So I'll recruit and get a pizza, okay? And then these go into your discard pile. All right, um, <clears throat> so now I use this top action. I can also use this bottom action because I did this completely. So I'll grab one more uh, toy, sorry, I, I said pizza before I think. Uh, I meant toy. Toys are blue. Pizzas look like cheesy pizza. I will remember that. Uh, so I did that. Now anybody else could discard a card from their hand, discard any card to take that top public action and follow along with you, okay? So that top action can be done by anybody by discarding a card. So. Again, it's very, very important that you use the action fully before you do the second one. So choose wisely which one you do first. Now, of course, just taking one, pe one pizza, one toy is a very simple thing to fulfill in, com in its entirety. So maybe you choose that one first and then do that one second. But regardless, the top one is always a public action. So when you uh, recruit a card, by the way, it goes into your discard pile, right? It doesn't go directly into your hand, okay? Uh, so then after you're done playing, what you do is you, um, you always have three here, always. So if something gets drawn here, just replenish it. <clears throat> so you, you can follow the leader of the other player by discarding some cards. Uh, you can't discard cards from your lookout area. Those are permanently in there once you put them in there and you have to use the action in full, okay? Then phase three, you can recruit one card and you can take a card from the park, you can take a card from somebody's yard or you can draw an unknown card from here. Cards in the yard are face up, cards in the park are face up, the park deck is face down. So you could just draw one blindly here. Then you discard. So all of your dis, uh, played cards, added cards, and any best friends in, in your hand, the ones with the stars are your best friends, they go into your discard pile. And then the ones you don't play, they go into your yard face up. And you're supposed to uh, put them 
faced away from you. So the other players can easily see them. So these cards are available to the, that player on their next turn. Besides these, they could also recruit from these, okay? Then you draw five cards from your own deck. So again, I have five left. We started with 10, so I draw my five cards and then I'm ready to go. Now, the first phase of the game is cleanup and the cleanup is getting rid of cards in your yard, but you have to have them there for every other player to choose from on their recruit phase. So cleanup is the first phase and to clean up then what you do is you get rid of, let me follow the wordings here, is uh, discard all your cards that are in your yard and put them face up into your discard pile. So if they don't get chosen, you keep them and you can reshuffle them into your deck later. Okay, and then the next round continues. So that's a short how to play the game. Um, now I'm no Rodney Smith, uh, I think that's his name, of uh, Watch It Played. He does great videos, but I just wanted to dig into this. Uh, I've been excited about this. It's the first game that Leader did that wasn't a Kickstarter game and that uh, you just directly pre-ordered. And uh, I got my shipping notification yesterday and it showed up today already. So that's great. Um, very happy to have this game. I look forward to playing it with uh, real life opponents. And I believe there's also a TTS mod, Tabletop Simulator. So if you wanna get online and give this a try before buying it, you probably should. Now, when you get to, um, different cards that give you different actions. Again, you can tuck cards under your lookout to get that suit uh, forever available to you. And you can tuck any number of cards under there up to plus one of your fort level, okay? So as you level up your fort, uh, add plus one to how many cards you can put here. Same with your backpack. Store toys or pizza in here up to one plus your fort level, okay? To get your fort leveled up, you pay the resources in between each level. So if you have a fort level card, which I think is this, yeah. So fort level card, um, you, if you pay two of any resources, you can go up to level one. At level one, you get to choose one of these three cards, one of your made up rule cards. So you grab these, pick which one you want, and you keep it face down for the end of the game, okay? That's a surprise. The made up rule is like, uh, you know, you remember when you were kids, you'd be like, no, 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 uh, if, you, if you have the most slime, uh, you know, then you get extra points for the most slime. So you keep that secret, okay? Uh, the next one, you need a pizza, a toy, and one of anything, you level up, and then you can grab one of the perk cards, okay? Again, there's only one plus the number of players, so there's only three available, so choose one. Like maybe you wanna get uh, extra large backpacks, you can have two more resources in your backpack at all time. So you could grab that perk card, okay? And then when you get to level five, you get the macaroni sculpture card and that triggers the end game. Or if you get to level 25 on the victory track, that triggers the end game. You're gonna get points for your fort level and some other things in the game. So uh, you're gonna get more than 25 points here. So that's, in a nutshell, the game of Fort, the new game from Leader Games, a deck builder for two to four players. Plays in 20 to 40 minutes. I'm really looking forward to getting a lot of games of this in because it does play so quick. The rules seem very simple to grasp and learn. And I love the idea of building forts. I spent all my summers building forts and riding my BMX bike. So once that fort is built, I challenge you to see who can get the biggest error off your BMX with a crusty piece of plywood on top of a brick as a ramp. Let's go try that out without uh, scraping up our knees, okay? We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.